Holy Spirit cannot overcome. There is no door the Holy Spirit's grace cannot breach. This is good news indeed. Welcome to Colfax United Methodist Church. I'm Pam Calhoun, your liturgist. George is our worship leader this morning, and I have no idea who's in Placer Hills or Dutch Flat, but someone. Linda someone. Daschel is in Placer Hills, and uh, Will is in Dutch Flat. Good, we're covered. So now would be the time to silence your cell phones, please. And if any of you have any information that needs to be updated, there should be a blue card in the pew holder in front of you. Uh, I'd like to read you something. Um, this is from Ed, uh, Ellie's husband. Uh, Ellie is in the hospital. Uh, she's had a, a stroke. Um, her, she called us uh, yesterday evening while we were driving back up. We already knew she wasn't doing well, but um, her speech is very slurred, but we were able to make out that uh, she does, ha did have a stroke, uh, bleeding in the brain, and this is what Ed said this morning. Ellie just called and she's up and seated in the chair, looking forward to getting well, slowly doing her exercise with the therapist this morning. Keep her in your prayers. Our two daughters are here for support, and our son will be arriving Thursday from South Korea to help us with packing our things. Also, D.S. Blake called last night and said that the cabinet had been informed and are, have put her on their praying lists. And so uh, let's, let's just stop and take a moment. Ruth, you decided that she is in Kaiser and Ruth is pointing in that direction. Right there. Right there. Oh, look at that. Raise your hands, please. God in heaven, descend upon Ellie. Descend upon the doctors, the therapists, all who treat her. Be with her family with your power and your strength. Fill us with hope for life anew. Let her be restored in body, in mind, and in spirit. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Are there any other announcements today? Lisa? Okay, so Ellie's going away party is on the 19th of June. She will be restored to us by then, we feel confident, and we'll be preaching, and then we will have gifts and lots of food. Okay, well, as I just said, Pastor Ellie is in the hospital, speech slurred and scared to death. And it doesn't seem right that that should happen just before her retirement. It, it just doesn't seem fair. And, and yet, there's a man named George Fenley, Fenley, F-E-N-L-E-Y, who's being sent to us to become our minister, to, to be with us. And, and so I find myself looking forward and looking back at the, at the same moment with mixed, mixed feelings. But for us, the church, there is only one direction we can look. There is only one direction. And today we're going to get our directions straight. That's what we'll be talking about. Our opening hymn this morning is number 98 in the hymnal, To God Be the Glory. God be the glory, great things he hath done. Oh. 
please remain standing. There's a change. Our opening prayer will be number 887 in the hymnal. And so that's, that's way in the back. 887. Find 887. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. no. In all things, we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus, Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. And now let's take a moment of silence for personal confession. Sisters and brothers, hear these words of assurance. God has opened the gates of the righteousness, and the righteous enter through it. The one who is the cornerstone, the builder, the one, the stone the builder rejected, has become our salvation. God offers us forgiveness and a fullness of grace in Christ's name. Amen. One thing about it, you can't see worth beans if you've been crying. <clears throat> All right, well, there must be good things that we can talk about because we must we must keep our confidence. Beth. My, my, my. Granddaughter graduating from the eighth grade. Boy, my. Remember when these were all little squeakers. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise be to God. Well, Ruth and I have just returned from the sibling get-together, and we got together with about five, six, seven, eight, Oh, she says ten, nine cousins. Um, one of the days, had a wonderful afternoon. Um, then got together with the whole family, kids, grandkids, the whole mess uh, yesterday. We couldn't have had a better time. We couldn't have had a better time. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise be to God. Yeah, David. Yes, the people of, of Ukraine um, at the Donbass is looking uh, like that's beginning to slip. And this breaks our hearts. Um, this breaks our hearts. We, we worship the God of peace. Lord, send peace on our earth. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, God, hear our prayers. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll start with Dick. In Duvalde, Texas. Oh my, my. Can you imagine going to bed at night knowing that your child is gone? What a world. I get so frustrated. 
But our prayers continue. We will be strong. We will be strong for the children, for the parents, for the husband or wife. Lord, in your mercy, oh God, hear our prayers. And, and Carolyn, yes. Yes, for Heston coming from South Korea, Ellie and Ed's boy. Uh, it's a long, long flight. Lord, in your mercy, oh God, hear our prayers. Gail. The joy of having my grandson come for, you know, normal. Yeah, yeah. Grand, it's a struggle for young children. Yes, it's tough growing up these days, but a grandson who is blossoming, shall we say. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise be to God. Yeah, we love the kids. Meredith. Wow, Meredith was able. Meredith was. Meredith was able to walk to the high school for graduation. Now that is really something. Two. What was it? Yeah, just two weeks ago you had fallen, but we're glad that you didn't break anything, and now you're walking. Clear to the high school. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise be to God. Ruth. And congratulations to Brennan. He didn't graduate high school. Okay, Brennan, our own Brennan graduated. So yay for Brennan. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise be to God. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send your love, send your power, send your grace. Lord, Listen to us pray. We're kind of all shook up right now. Restore us. Restore our Ellie. Restore each of us. Let us see new visions. Let us see new hopes. Let us see new horizons. Let us see new sunrises upon each of our lives and upon the lives of each one who can't be here right now. We hang on, Lord, to your promises that you are with us to the end of the days. And that's not now. So you're still with us. You're still here strengthening us. But help us to open up and feel it. Buoy us up. Be the wind beneath our wings, the hope to which we are called. Now as we continue this service, descend upon us like a dove with your spirit. Touch each one and let us know that we are yours. We ask all this in the name of Jesus the Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward? Bless the gifts we offer you this day, that they may bring hope and new life into our world. Amen.
Our hymn of preparation this morning is number 408 in the hymnal, The Gift of Love. Our scripture reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verse 17. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. The word of God for the people of God. We are at a crossroads. I'm old. This church is old. I won't comment on you. You can decide yourself. Pam just read in the last days, and these are not the last days, but they were talking about then, so now we are in those days right now when God declares that he will pour his spirit upon us. And sons and daughters will prophesy. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Now, as a young person, you know, life is all about looking forward. We, you know, when we're little squeakers, we look forward to going to school. And then, you know, after a while, we look forward to graduating and, and going on a first date or something. And then, then we maybe look forward to getting married or, or buying a house or a job. And, and, and then we look forward to perhaps children or, or a big vacation, go to Europe or something. It, it's really a job of kind of, of uh, someday. When you think about it, kids are sort of someday people, having a hard time getting in the moment sometimes. And, and yet I suggest that today is the day, right now. Today is the day. Would you pray with me? Lord, let the words of my mouth and the spirits of our hearts be, be with you. And that we hear what you have us hear. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Today is the day. Today is the day. Even though many of us are not young, even though our church is not young, we must see visions. We must see visions. Now, you can dream dreams, and I hope they're good dreams, you know, at night time or at nap time. But let us pray even those dreams are, are, are visionary, that sometimes we wake up with a new something in our hearts and minds. But this is the day. We must rise up and shine, as the song says. When I talk, taught sixth grade, I often said to the kids, sit up straight and pay attention. And the ones, the believer kids, sat up a little straighter and paid attention. They knew I was going to teach something and, you know, sit up straight and pay attention. It's an easy command. And I love the kids that... So I ask you, sit up straight and pay attention. Oh, I even heard a little creak there. Thank you, Ed. Good. Yeah, look at Wally, sit up straight, got ready to go. We are about to have a new vision in this church. A dream, I don't care what you define it as, but it will be new because this is the day. Ellie is sick, Ellie's in ICU. We must pray like Ellie is walking down here, restored with, with lightness in her step. Not just well, but lightness in her step. 
wholeness. That, that's, that's a vision. That's a vision. That Ellie will be all that God intends for her to be. Full of energy. And then there's George Finley. He's our new minister. George is younger than I am, so he's young. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, thank you. And, and, and he's going to be our new minister, and he has energy. Um, he's been a music director at several churches. The guy can play the piano and a bunch of other things, and he plays with all ten fingers, apparently. His mother was a, his mother was a concert pianist, so as a squeaker, uh, he, he started and learned his lessons well. And George asked, we, we, met, we met him in the social hall, and George asked, what kind of music do you guys have? Now remember, he's talking to all three churches. We had three people from each of the churches on the SPRC. And we said, well, you know. He said, well, is it, is it traditional or mixed? And we said, well, you know. And so he said, well, would you mind? Do you think the congregations would mind if we started to mix in? So he says, don't worry. He says, I, I will... I'll, if you want to just do straight hymns, then we'll do straight hymns. But if you'd like something more, and to a person. People said, no, it would be okay. That would be okay. It seemed like he had a vision. And we thought, that'll be okay. That'll be okay. Because, you see, we have this feeling, at least I do, that if we don't make some changes we will cease to exist. Since I've been here, lots of wonderful, wonderful people have either moved down to Auburn or moved on to heaven. But we have, and, and there's lots of you that weren't here when I got here, and that's good, but we're, you know, we're talking our elevator pitch. We need to do some changing. We're getting a new minister and what would be the point of getting a new minister if we didn't do something new? Thank you. Yeah. And, and you, George Fenley is not scary. He's tall. He's handsome. He, he grins from ear to ear constantly. He seems to be a very happy man. Has energy. Has energy. And, and we could tell in that meeting that he had vision for three churches that he doesn't even really know. He asked a lot of questions, but he has vision. So what's our job? What's our job? To join in that vision. To join in that vision. Even, even if you're not sure that you like it. Because, you know, lots of us, we don't like change. Always done it this way. But, but... God sent Jesus and literally flipped the world on its head. There was big change from the way it was in the Old Testament. Big, big, big change. Such a big change, we even changed our calendars. It changed everything. Our laws, our rules, our thoughts. Everything changed. So, our job is to have vision. And how do we do that? I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. This is the scripture we had. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Meaning have new ideas and talk about future. Prophesying is not telling about what happened last week. Prophesying is all about tomorrow. Peter there was quoting Joel. It was the day of Pentecost. And they thought the disciples were drunk because they're all doing this speaking in tongues sort of thing, talking in, in ways that seemed odd and yet everybody can understand what they said. We don't know what that exactly was like, but next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. We wear red and we wait for that same spirit because that spirit, that spirit will help us see visions. Help us see visions. Visions that the Holy Spirit will defend, descend, you know, like the, this, this one doesn't have it, but the, the Methodist is a cross and flame. That's what we call their, our symbol, cross and flame. The, that flame is the Holy Spirit. And somebody at our reunion said, did you know that somebody's belly aching about 
the Methodist church because it looks like it's burning the cross or something going, oh, dude, just get a life. Just get a, you know, pick up your Bible sometime, you know. <laughs> Golly, you just wonder. So we joined George's vision, even though we might not understand. Now, D.S. Blake Busick, I want to give him a little shout out because after the meeting, I said, Blake, I didn't think you could do it. This is marvelous. I mean, we just walked out of there like we want Ellie to walk in, just on, on, just floated out of the room. I said, I didn't think you could do it because we had no money. <laughs> you know, we, we were in trouble. And somehow he worked this thing out and found this person. Found this person. In that room, to a person, everyone said yes, and not just, yeah, but yes. And so we must say, what? Yes. yes. Yes, this has to be of God. It must be. If we don't believe that, you need to just get up and walk out the door. Because this has to be of God. We have to believe that God is smiling upon us, that God has vision for us, and that this man, well, who we hardly know, but seemed pretty excited about coming here and being with us. By the way, he's the kind of guy that after you... He, you say your name, and so Ruth's da 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 da, and she tells a little bit about her. And then you say, Now say your name again. And she says, Ruth, didn't write a thing down. I'm guessing he's probably going to know who people are very quickly. He wasn't having to take notes. This guy is just a guy that catches on. He's going to know us. He's going to know us in here, not just, Oh, hi. He's going to know us in here. We say yes to Ellie, and we say yes to George. In the last days, it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, all flesh. And that your sons and daughters will prophesy and your young women and men will see visions and your old women and men will dream dreams. Will dream dreams of vision. So, become young of heart. Become young of heart. Be the visionary. Help, help George Fenley realize the vision that he feels called to. And let his visions become our visions. Because God has smiled upon us. Pray for Ellie. Pray for George Friendly. Pray for our church. Amen. Thank you. Our closing hymn, number 672 in the hymnal, God be with you till we meet again.
asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your hearts will be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and the incomparably great power for those of us who believe. Amen. We